My name is Blair Brown, and I am a physical therapist at Lakeshore Sports Physical Therapy. My practice focuses on working with patients with scoliosis and empowering them to become active participants in managing their lifelong journey with scoliosis. The Schroff method was developed in 1921 by Katarina Schroff in Eastern Germany. Over the years, the method has evolved and spread around the world to help children, teens, and adults with scoliosis learn to better care for their spine. Idiopathic scoliosis affects 2-3% to 3 of the population and is most often seen in females. Progression of the curves is also more frequent in females and most likely to occur during a major growth spurt or during the Tanner stage 2 of puberty. Tanner stage 2 is when the breast and pubic hair start to develop. Characteristics of scoliosis include side deviation and rotation of the spinal segments which can lead to not only loss in flexibility, but also structural changes in the vertebrae and the discs. They become more wedge-shaped due to the asymmetrical loading, which leads to permanent structural changes as the individual develops. Scoliosis is diagnosed through physician evaluation and parent observation. The state of Illinois no longer requires a yearly school screen, so it's important that children be screened at their yearly checkups as well as parents to be extra observant as their child is growing of their posture and their back. The Adams test is the most common quick screen for scoliosis where the patient stands with their hands between the legs and will bend forward. If a structural idiopathic scoliosis is present, the rib hump or the elevated rib cage will remain visible. If a functional scoliosis due to muscle tightness or inflexibility um, is present, the rotational component will resolve with the forward bending. X-rays are used to determine the severity of scoliotic curves through a measurement called the Cobb angle. The Cobb angle is measured by finding the most tilted vertebrae at the top and bottom of the curve. A line is drawn parallel to the superior vertebral endplate for the top vertebrae in, in, along the inferior vertebral in, end plate for the bottom vertebrae. The angle formed where the two lines intersect is called the Cobb angle. Physicians differ in opinion as to when to start treatment and which treatments to try. Treatment options for scoliosis include bracing and physical therapy as well as surgery. Bracing the effectiveness relies on dosage, adherence, and quality of the brace. And surgery is typically not considered until a curve progresses to around 50 degrees. As for physical therapy, we have the Schroth method. In a study by Rigo et al., it was found that only 5.6% of cases that were treated with conservative interventions, bracing and Schroth physical therapy, underwent surgery, compared to 28.1% that underwent surgery in the control or non-intervention group. Also, in a systematic review performed by Dolan et al. in 2007, it was found that the surgery rate for bracing alone was 23% compared to 22% in the observation group. The results of current literature are really showing promise with the combination of bracing and Schroth physical therapy for treating patients with scoliosis. So what is the Schroth method? The Schroth method is a physical therapy treatment approach that uses manual therapy techniques and scoliosis-specific exercises that are tailored to each individual. We focus on lengthening shortened structures, mobilizing stiff spinal segments, strengthening weak muscles, and improving postural awareness and control through exercise and breathing. The objectives are to decrease curve progression, decrease postural asymmetries, improve static and dynamic postural control, develop a home exercise program for long-term maintenance, delay or prevent surgery, and help decrease time spent in a passive brace. Hanging is often a common warm-up exercise that is, can easily be done at home with a chin-up bar. It's a great way to work on breathing into shortened areas on the concave side of the curves, and also a great way to traction and stretch the spine without putting further asymmetric load through the spine. Prone shoulder counter traction is an exercise often done as a warm-up in the clinic due to the 
multiple number of props that are needed in order to get the patient set up correctly. It can be a very difficult exercise to perform at home, but it's a great exercise to work on breathing and stretching because the corrections in these positions are passive, allowing the patient to focus their attention more on the detailed breathing that's involved. Sideline shoulder counter traction is a great first home exercise for many patients. It's supported but also active. It helps engage the quadratus lumborum to help decrease lateral deviation in the lumbar spine. It can also help work on stretching the concavity in the thoracic spine and also works on postural control and core stability. This is also a great position for relaxing and watching TV for patients because you can get the spine in a supported, symmetrical position fairly easily using folded towels or rice bags. The muscle cylinder in kneeling is a progression from the shoulder counter traction and side lying seen on the previous slide. This is a more dynamic exercise that requires not only core stability and balance, but also incorporation of the breathing techniques that are practiced with the two previous exercises. But due to the increased demand of concentration, this one usually takes a while to build up to. Manual therapy, the goals of the techniques are to lengthen concavities and derotate the rib hump and lumbar prominences. We use soft tissue mobilization, passive stretching, and joint mobilization. We also focus treatment around uh, corrections during activities of daily living, such as in the pictures on the left, teaching patients to alter positions of their legs and or hands in standing to help provide the spine with a more symmetrically loaded experience in this position. Also working on desk setup and seated posture, again, to improve symmetry and decrease the tendency to want to sit and lean into curves. A home exercise program is provided to each patient and will be tailored to their individual needs. Each patient will be provided with written instructions and pictures as well as videos that will describe the position, reps, sets, and frequency, making it easy to practice at home. Family training is also very important for younger patients to help with positioning and encourage compliance. Early intervention is important. It will decrease the risk of need for surgical intervention, and if treatment can be started before a major growth spurt, um, we can also work on decreasing the degree of structural changes that uh, will happen as a result of the scoliotic progression. A supportive network is very important for patients who have scoliosis. It includes the physician, the physical therapist, the orthotist, and potentially a surgeon. Good communication between all of these individuals will help provide the patient with better outcomes. If you have, if you have any further questions, please feel free to contact me at bb at lakeshoresportspt.com or call the clinic at 773-665-9950. Information about the Schroff Method could also be found at our clinic's website. Thank you.